Hello and welcome to Channel 2S. I'm your host, Second Soundwave, and it's time for some Gumpla news. So Shizuoka Hobby Show just happened last night in Japan, or I guess today morning for them. And while it wasn't quite as impressive as I was expecting, there was no Re100, I found that especially disappointing, there was still some pretty cool stuff to see. The big main showpiece for the convention was two new kits from Mobile Suit Moon Gundam. If you don't know what Moon Gundam is, it's a late UC manga that's been running recently and it seems to be reasonably popular because it's getting its own line of high grade kits. Of course, we're gonna be starting off with the Moon Gundam itself, and this is an interesting looking design. I've never actually seen a head to toe picture of this kit before looking at the actual model, so I had no idea he literally had a giant crescent moon on his back. That's kind of weird. Moon Gundam apparently has the same mechanical designer as IBO, and that's really apparent with the Gundam design here. If he just showed me the legs from this kit, I'd honestly guess they were from the Astroth or some other expanded universe IBO Gundam. Alongside the Moon Gundam, we'll also be getting a model kit of the Varguil. Varguil? Varguil. I'd, let's just go with Varguil. The Varguil looks pretty cool. It's like a slimmer, sleeker Sazabi. Again, it has very, very IBO looking legs. I don't know how I feel about this design. I guess it's okay. And unfortunately, when it comes to Shizuoka Hobby Show reveals, those are the two and only two retail kits. Let's talk about Master Grade Avalanche Exia Dash. I like the Avalanche Exia Dash. I think it's something we really, really needed a Master Grade of. However, it's something we really should have had a Master Grade of several years ago. Nowadays, there are so many different resin conversion kits, upgrade sets, and just outright bootleg kits of it out there that most people that would have bought this kit probably already have some kind of 1100 Avalanche Exia. Bandai really missed out on a lot of customers by waiting so long to release this kit. However, this kit is definitely going to curb stomp all the others when it comes to production quality since this is an official Bandai plastic model. I'm also really excited for this kit because the one major problem that Gundam Exia had, like the original Master Grade, was that the feet were really weak and loose and floppy. But the Avalanche Exia Dash will actually be coming with a sparkly green version of an Action Base 2. This is really cool to see and definitely a necessity for the Avalanche Exia because once you have those dash parts on the legs, you're not getting it to stand. I mean, you can kind of stand it if you like prop them up on the ground, but it's, it's not pretty. The Gundam Stormbringer is a really cool looking new Gundam design. This is a Master Grade model that's not entirely new, it is based very heavily off the GM dominance. Apparently this Gundam design is coming from a soon to be released spin-off manga for Gundam Build Divers. The Master Grade model is going to be Premium Bandai, and I kind of wish they'd release a high grade of this as just a normal retail kit. I mean, I know it would have to be a new mold because there's no high grade gym dominance, but still, I just get it off the merit of the design. It's, it's a good looking Gundam, you know? I like good looking Gundams. So apparently the rival suit of the Gundam Stormbringer, or at least another suit from the same manga, is the Polypod Ball. Now the Polypod Ball is a very funky looking kit and I kind of love it. Like this thing is just the right kind of weird. It's a green ball with spider legs. The legs look really cool. I like the way they're designed. I hope they're really poseable. Just looking at them right now, the mechanical detail on them is incredible. And since it's based off the ball, it's not that expensive for a Master Grade, even though it is still gonna be premium Bandai. The 2.0 Master Grade of Ghetto's Gelgug is something we've needed for a really, really, really long time, and we're finally getting one. I think I might have mentioned my desire for this kit back when I reviewed Uma Lightning's Gelgug, and yeah, I'm, I'm sold on this already. The HGUC Ground Gundam with Parachute Pack is pretty much the perfect premium Bandai kit. Let me break this down and explain it to you. So we have an unchanged Gundam ground type with some extra weapons that can almost all be found with the GM ground type. You get the GM ground type's head. Again, you can get that from the GM ground type. Then you get the missile launcher pod from the GM sniper. So a little bit more rare, but still obtainable. It's also something that I'm sure you could get from one of the old 8th MS team kits, although I could be wrong on that. And you get a brand new mold parachute pack. Now the parachute pack, yes, it looks kind of cool, but it's something they really only used in the intro for the show. As far as I remember, you never see this thing in any episode proper. So once you put the whole package together, you have a great deluxe version of the Gundam ground type for all the 8th MS team fans without anything in the box being incredibly popular. This is exactly the kind of stuff we should be seeing in the PB and I web shop. Just cool, fun novelties. So they did show off those four GMs from Origin at Shizuoka. 
They're in a little bit more dynamic poses than they were last time we saw them, so it's nice to see that. Unfortunately though, we did get confirmation that the GM Sniper Custom will be P Bandai. So it looks like that kind of offhand, half-joking remark I made last time I talked about them was actually absolutely true. They're gonna take the ones that look like recognizable, iconic MSV designs that people would actually want, and they're gonna make those premium, and then they're gonna take the weird half-new, half-kind-of-old, but not really designs, like the Guard Custom with the Sniper Custom chest, and they're gonna make those kits retail because money, I guess. It really does piss me off how they've been handling the origin line, but that's something I'm pretty sure I've talked about before and I'm not gonna dive into again. There weren't any new build fighters kits at Shizuoka, but they did have a couple of them kind of teased in shadow boxes. So there's one with big shoulders, and then there's this other one that has something on its arm. And that's about all we can tell so far. There's, there's not much else to go on. Feel free to speculate about what kits these are in the comments below. I think it's pretty safe to say that one of them is going to be the main villains astray from the opening. Okay, I lied earlier. We do actually have one new build divers kit. SD Cross Silhouette Double O Diver. Yay. Even though I'm super excited for the Cross Silhouette kits, the Double O Diver is just such a boring design, I can't really bring myself to get excited for it. At least the SD version looks like it comes with the Diver Ace unit. It is the month of May, so of course we got box art for most, if not all, of our May kits. We got the F91 2.0 box, which is looking absolutely awesome, as Master Grade boxes tend to do. We got the Ogre Jinx, the Momoka Pool, then we have that new CeraVe, the Diver Ace unit, the Tilt Rotor Pack, the Momo Petit Guy, and the Momo Haro. Then we have some new images for a couple of those kits. So it looks like Momoka Pool is gonna have this kind of ball mode where you can suck the arms into the body, or more likely you just take the arms off and then fold the flaps down over them, and you fold the head away and you just have a ball with legs. Also, I think this is the first time we've ever seen the CeraV using those ship parts as a cannon. It's a pretty cool gimmick. Then we have some snap built images, as always courtesy of Dengeki Hobby, for the Master Grade F91. There's nothing I can say about this kit that I haven't said already. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm gonna try my hardest to get my hands on one, but unfortunately I did miss the pre-order window for it. But it looks great. You can see it lit up in these images. I love the way the lighting looks in it. It does use that new LED unit that Bandai's been using for their Star Wars kits. The only flaw I've been able to find with this kit is that it doesn't have that super cool display base the first one had. The Leo NPD looks pretty fun, and actually now that I mention it, we did get box art for the original Leo as well, obviously because it just came out two days ago, so I'm going to throw that up on the screen right there. I can't believe I forgot to mention this with the other kits, but it's great box art. Like, it's really good. The swarm of Leos holding the Oz flag in the background, love it. We got some pictures for the Wound Wart, for a premium Bandai kit that's a brand new mold. It's looking surprisingly nice. However, they're still showing him with his gun resting on the ground. Not sure how I feel about that. And he's got the little funky flight mode thing too. I don't I don't really understand that. It's it's weird to me because it doesn't look like it's made up of the entire mobile suit. Even from just a design standpoint, this doesn't look like it has the same amount of mass as the mobile suit mode. I'm sure someone who's more knowledgeable in advance of Zeta than I am will explain it in the comments. The Zaku Mine Layer is looking surprisingly nice. I'm especially fond of how colorful the backpack is. The color separation on this looks great, way, way better than the backpack for the high mobility Zaku. See, now this is what a real grade Zaku's backpack should look like. Great color separation, tons of detail. Then finally, we have some pictures of the perfect grade red frame Astray Kai, and guys, I, I love this kit. I love the green additives and the sword, and I know the proportions aren't right on this. I'm not a huge fan of them myself either, but I think that just the coolness of the sword outweighs the proportional issues this kit has. Yeah, I just, I really like this kit. It's a, it's a cool kit. I want one. I'm probably gonna get one and regret it because it's like $250 and the normal Astray is like $180, and I could just get the normal Astray for way cheaper, but I'm gonna get the one with the tactical arms anyways because it looks cool. Finally, just to wrap things up, we have the winning Fumina Gundam-based version. Obviously, as the name implies, this is a Gundam-based Tokyo exclusive. It's just the winning Fumina in gundam bases, white and blue colors. The Haro plow line is also unsurprisingly continuing. So beyond the four Haros that have already been announced, we're getting a yellow Haro, and no, this is not the same as the one Lock-On used. That was an orange Haro. And we're getting a blue Haro. So yeah. More Haros, more fun. And there you go, Gunpla News. I'm sure there's gonna be one or two more reveals. I'm probably gonna talk about them next episode of Gunpla News. So if you wanna stick around and see that, subscribe, I guess, if you're not already. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. I'm your host, Second Soundwave. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care, guys.